Hello Minders, welcome back to the Mind of Watercolor. Well today what I thought I would do is just give you uh, one additional blending technique to add to your arsenal and to kind of supplement the last video I did on blending. Um, now this is uh, another way to blend. It, this is useful for really for larger objects I would say than the white blend that I showed you last time. The advantage of this method is it gives you really a smoother blend, but it takes a little longer. But what I need to do in this kind of blend is make sure that this is all thoroughly wet. What you want is a nice even sheen. See if I can get that on camera, sort of. See that nice even sheen? You want to maintain that evenly throughout the whole shape. That's the key to this blend. But as long as you see a little bit of a wet sheen, you're good. Now generally, I don't get more water. I go over here, I still have enough wetness in my brush to loosen up some paint. And you just paint on your darkest side. And immediately that, that paint will start to move through. But now you have the aid of all this moisture down here. So I'm just going to blot that out first. And spread. And the wetness in this circle is, is basically blending it for me. I'm going to go up here and get a darker color. It's also uh, a reddish color, but it's, I think that's an alizarin crimson. And I'm still blending wet in wet. And knowing how much water, I'm going to rinse it, I'm going to blot it. Knowing how much water you have in your brush, how much is on the paper, is not really something I can show you because you see me doing it, but you know the, it's hard to quantify. It's something you just have to practice and get a feel for. Okay, I'm rinsing my brush almost clean now, but I don't want it very wet. And I have a lot of blending control. And each time I come back into this, I want to make sure my brush is fairly dry. If I put too much water in there, it's going to push all that pigment back towards the edge. Maybe even give you a bloom. I know that's very similar to the white blend, but it is different when this whole area is wet. You're adding the extra step of pre-wetting this shape to get that blend. And again, as I mentioned, it's perfect for a larger shape. So let's do a, a kind of crazy shape, funky shape. Uh, I think Susan Harrison to stain does 90% of her washes this way. Even the details. She does these little tiny little wet on wet washes. Completely wets an area, spreading the moisture out until it, it absorbs and then evenly, evenly coats. And she calls it priming the paper. Whatever you want to call it. Once the absorption's even, you can see it. Now I got a little bit of puddling down here. But what will take care of that is just one quick blot. And there you go. And the nice thing about a wet and wet blend is you can just start dabbing. You can do very complex blends this way. In fact, just to show you how complex you can get with the blend, I'm just going to kind of blend all around this one edge and down on this edge. So that's like blending into the center. Now see how much the wet and wet wash has already blended? That's because I took the time to get a nice even sheen over this shape. Okay, let's say I, I want to ramp that out or graduate that out more. Well, I'm going to I'm going to wipe the pigment off my brush, probably even clean it a little bit. I'm going to do that. Okay, my brush is too dry. And this is what you have to do. You have to judge. But the rule of thumb is... You want your brush to gradually get drier as you manipulate these blends, not wetter. 
I know some of you said in the last blending video I did that that was a light bulb moment for you. Because the temptation is, if you're not familiar with watercolor, is to keep adding water to blend. Well, that just gives you a mess. And I still see a nice sheen over everything. I could even go back just to show you how complex you can get. And I can blend yellow from this side. All in the same blend. I could also wait till this whole thing is dry and glaze this blend in. But if I've got the sheen and the even wetness on the paper that I know I want, why not? You know? So that's the wet and wet blend. It's filling the shape first with clear water. Or you could fill it, let's show you that. Fill it with a color too. I've got a nice flat, even wash, but it's also stayed nice and evenly wet. We're going to get a purple gradation going from this edge. And I have not added any more water to my brush to get that paint in there. But now I'm going to rinse my brush, blot it. But there you go. That's a, a nice, even, wet and wet blend. Now let me show you a really neat thing that a wet and wet blend can do that just about no other blend can do. And that's blend in multiple directions. I'm just going to do this kind of bar and this circle here. Now same thing. I'm going to fill with clean water first. Get these shapes nice and evenly wet. Okay, I've got a pretty nice even sheen on both. I'm on a fairly dry pigment application because you don't want too much movement if you're trying to get a subtle blend. Perhaps you want one side to go darker than the other, kind of like shading a cylinder in this sphere. Maybe you want the same. Blending out in all directions is something that a wet and wet blend does very well. There you go. Wet and wet blend. I hope that was a help. That's going to be added to my basics playlist for you new subscribers and especially you beginners. I'm, I'm just getting a lot of comments out there that there are a number of you that are just starting and you don't know what to do. So this episode's for you guys, but also check out on my channel, the basics playlist. There are other great videos on there for beginners and for basic construction. So if you're new to this channel and haven't checked out that basics playlist, do so. Thanks, everybody. And if this was a help, I hope you'll thumbs it up. Subscribe if you want to see more of this. And oh, my goodness, you Patreon guys. I am blown away. The response I got in the first weekend is just been amazing. And you guys are going to help me launch this into the next level. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And that just means regular content. And you got some rewards coming. You've already been able to see that I posted an early bird kind of preview of my episodes. So I'm probably going to do that as a regular thing. You'll get to see my episodes before anybody else. Your support is meaning so much. It is so unbelievably encouraging. So thanks again. It's been a pleasure, guys. See you next time.